Episode 63, baby. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Usually Wrong. This is with Matt Parsons, and it's a really good one. This is the hardest. I haven't really laughed doing a podcast in a really, really long time. So this was, this is great, and you're going to love it. Uh, here are some dates. Maybe you'll care about them. Uh, I'll be in West Virginia uh, at the Mountain State Brewing Company for a show Zach Summerfield is putting on. And if you don't know Zach Summerfield from Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, he is doing a lot to bring up that scene down there. I don't know a lot about it. Maybe he's not, but I think he is. And he's a really good guy, funny comic. Get to know him if you don't. Uh, that's uh, Thursday, the 18th of July at 9 p.m. I'll be in Cleveland uh, the 19th and 20th with Derek Knob Snyder. Let's keep going through the calendar. Maybe there's some shit you care about. Uh, I'm doing a show with myself and Colin Chamberlain at the Indian uh, Indian Lake Lodge. Uh, that is in Central City, Pennsylvania. It's just me and Colin. And then I need to find a host for that, actually. Uh, that will be a lot of fun. There's a motorcycle outside. Uh, that is the 27th of July. And then August 10th, uh, I'll be at Arcade Comedy Theater for uh, a really fun show. Uh, no, wait, that's August 9th. Oh, boy. That, you know what? It's the 9th or the 10th. It's uh, Dave Stewart's show, uh, The Real Pittsburgh Stories. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of good people on, including Osha Dwyer, so come out to that. You can grab tickets at Arcade Comedy Theater. Here's the show. Uh, that I'm really excited for you to hear. This is with Matt Parsons, who's been very, very kind to me in this podcast, uh, and a very funny, great dude, and we had a lot of fun. I haven't, again, I haven't laughed this hard in a podcast in <laughs> in a long time, so it was great to talk to him. It's been months trying to get him on the show, uh, so I hope you I hope you enjoy it. He wanted to shout out Ron Renwick's monthly mic over at Red Beards, uh, and then his open mic at Scarpese's. And you should attend both of those. And I should as well. I need. I, I should be at Scarpazies more. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Enjoy the show. Enjoy Usually Wrong, episode number 63 with Matthew Parsons. When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and forget the money. Because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You will be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing been a long life spent in a miserable way. What the hell was I thinking? Are we, are we, we're doing this or we're just, we're just chatting. Okay. Do I have to be, I have to be Listen, like right it doesn't here. matter. You can be wherever you'd to, like. You do have to be right here though. I have to, okay. You like my Buick? That Buick is, a, you, and it's great because you, we're in an office right now and there's an attorney and a psychologist mm-hmm. and they're probably wondering what are these people doing? I get I get complaints from next door. Some I'm, no, I'm sorry I shouldn't say complaints. I've gotten one complaint about me being too loud, but like I kept like I've had people come in here high. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I'm like I should be more clear. This is like not in a. It's like in a a place where other people are. Well, I mean, what kind of attorney that could be beneficial? I have no idea. Well, who I don't know. Why beneficial? Criminal defense. Obviously, that's true. You're handing some cards out. I don't you know. You know what? That's nice. I should bring. You should ask her. Are you on drugs right now? A uh, couple. Okay. No, well, I'm, I'm not on any drugs. <laughs> no, I get tested quite frequently. Do you? Yeah, between the army and my civilian job, absolutely. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's constant. What's your civilian job? I don't know. I'm in cargo claims for a major Shh. moving company in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, so not like cargo, like shorts claims. Um, d- it depends. It really depends on that. Nate is left. Do you like it? Do you like your real job? No. Well, I mean, I guess I don't mind it, but like it's a it could be a pain in the ass. You you're dealing with people bitching at you about like an end table, you know. You're like, okay, there are bigger problems in the world. Some poor guy just moved twenty thousand pounds for you, you know, and now you want to charge him for an end table. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well then do you you deal with people a lot then? 
all the time. All the time. All the time. That's tough. So, I do with people a lot too. I don't. I really love it, but like. You get every now and then somebody that just, they don't understand what you're saying and it's tough to communicate to them in a way. Like that's something I need to get better at, even in the stand-up world, communicating what I'm trying to say better. I don't know. I think you do a good job. Thank you. You're good at what I you do. You you were fishing for a compliment, <laughs> weren't you? And doing. That's all I was doing. <laughs> you got it one. It yes. paid off. It did. <laughs> it I, paid I, off. I, that's why I asked about the Buick again. <laughs> Some compliments about my Buick. Every time we leave like an open mic now, I'm like, whose Buick is that? And then I press the door. <laughs> you just beep it real like quick. Like the commercials. <laughs> like, the, is that a Buick? <laughs> Town and country. Town and country. I got that four months ago because my I had a Nissan Altima. Not to brag, but I had a Nissan Altima. Great car. It is a great car. It did me well. And Highly then, rated. Highly rated, very safe, and then something not safe happened. It just stopped accelerating while I was driving. I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta pull over. Nissan, right now, Nissan, <laughs> Nissan. What do you drive? What is that out there? It's a Jeep. Is that a Jeep? Absolutely. <sighs> a Liberty. You look like a Jeep. Guy. How about America? How about America? <laughs> Do you like it? Does it get good gas mileage? Not at all. Not at all. Not, <laughs> I didn't think so. I wish it did. It certainly doesn't. Well, there is an element. My girlfriend wants a Land Rover. Monica wants a Land Rover. That's a Jeep, right? You got Jeep, you got Land Buick Rover. money. You got Land Rover money. I do not have Buick money. I was looking for a car, and he's like, I got this for twelve grand. Do you want it? I'm like, absolutely. I want a Buick for large 12 grand. on 12 that. Twelve large. 2013. You know what I wanted? I wanted Bluetooth, and it has... Bluetooth. I feel like you talked him down though. You no, got it. He was at like fifteen, and you were like, oh. "Well, he he wanted to sell me like a fifteen thousand. He said he showed me around the lot, and he showed me a stick, and was like, "I could teach you to drive stick. <laughs> this is nine grand." I'm like, "No thanks, man. I don't spend any more time <laughs> right now at the dealership <laughs> than I am right now. I'm right I don't my want hour. You to, like, I don't have time to ex- learn. <laughs> well, that would be pretty good." That would be pretty good. Like the guy at the dealership taught me how to drive a stick. Do you know how to drive a stick? Let me guess. I've done yes. it. I've done it in Iraq. Yeah, a little bit, but I, I'm not going to buy a stick. Do they all? Do all the cars in Iraq come stick? Like in the army? No, that seems like no, maybe most military vehicles are automatic. Are they? No. What if you have to be precise about how fast you're going? Is that what stick does? You're getting an automatic. And in an up-armored vehicle, you are not going to be precise at all. Oh, uh, okay. It is a lot of smash that and glide when sense. you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> That's thrilling. I wore my nicest green for the Army. I, it's very patriotic. Like that? It's so close Thank to the fourth. Very much. <laughs> it's so close to the fourth. I thought I would go out of my way. <laughs> for when did you start stand up? That looks like the shirt that John Rambo had when he got out of the army. Like that I've was the only t shirt he had. I've never seen it. Don't you do that. <laughs> you know what? You can <laughs> I'm you can go to Target. This was six dollars, all right? I get all my t shirts from Target. I think the $6. government gave me that shirt for free, the one you Yeah, but you had to go to the army. Do you think I had, I'm, I had to you go think to I'm it. prospering it, in the army? I had to knock Look at on the, the difference door. between us. I think you'd be fantastic. You're lying. Absolutely. That's a very sweet thing of you to say, but you, you abso- are lying. You could you're absolutely lying be in my teeth. platoon and I would just yell your name all the time. No, I would you no, that's not true. <laughs> Like the wall that you have to climb up in what camp, base camp or whatever, like training. Yeah, base it's like, camp. I couldn't sure, get it. It's, it's I Mount Everest. It. <laughs> I couldn't get up it. I could not get up if you gave you could me absolutely or, do if it. you gave me a rope. I still could no, not. No, there's up. a nope. se- there's a secret killer behind those glasses. I can see it. You're lying. <laughs> I can't. I ran. I did uh, the half marathon relay, and I, it was the worst. I ran six point four miles. Go- I ran the half marathon. I was out there. I just ran. What'd you it. do it in? I have no idea. I did it in an hour five. I was getting passed by old ladies. You know, it wasn't good. Are you? But you're more of a lifter, right? I just ran. You're more of a lifting I'm heavy. Things. Right now, I'm more of a not working out a lot. Is it true? Kind of guy. I got a lot. I got a lot going on, Nate. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Could they say? So you are on what's? I don't know a lot about the military world. So are you on reserve? Yes, what, I'm a reserve. Okay, so I'm that means reserve. that they could say, "Hey, you have to go overseas." They have tomorrow three different times. They've said that. I went to uh, Iraq in 2008, uh, Afghanistan in 2013, and then uh, most recently Kuwait in 2016. Yeah, how is that? For one logistical thing, can you hold this closer to right here? 
because sometimes I get off of here too, and then I hate to interrupt because I am fascinated about this. So mm-hmm. what is that like uh, in a relation? This is where my mind goes, all right? This is where my relationship mind goes. How is dealing with that in a relationship? If you are, if you are on reserve and you have to go over at basically the drop of a dime, how is that? How do you how do you navigate that in a relationship? You know, it is what it is, um, and I know that's a cliche answer. However, you have to trust the other person, and and you know, trust that they're gonna do right by you. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. You know, it's just it depends on how much exposure you have. I I was in a relationship in '08 and um, in 2013 and 2016, um, all with different women. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, it can work. Uh, you can make it work. I mean, it it takes communication and really doing your best to to respect the other person but let me tell you the first time i met you it was at um friday's what's that mic the 10 minute mic um parkway parkway i met you there and you were outside i'm like who's this who's this tough guy <laughs> zach sipley guy zach sipley's <laughs> mic absolutely i was not talking about zach sipley i'm talking about you <laughs> i assure you <laughs> i love zach but when did you start stand up then oh what was it um last December I did it like a year and a half something like that so not very long you've been in it a year and a half a year and a half I would have pegged like a year thanks (laughs) 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 not because of your material but because of how long I have been (laughs) that's not what I meant you got a real, no. uh, real warm welcome, Nate. This is this is the heavy. I don't. You listen. This is the heaviest podcast we've ever had. I love it. I, I just I remember you seeing around about a year ago, like at there outside, and I was like, I, I want to know him, but I'm afraid to talk to him. Well, for the the longest time, I did uh, Trixie's uh, Mike in the South Side on Sundays only, and it was like the it was kind of the island of misfit toys. You know what I mean? <laughs> like uh, you would catch like uh, I've never I did I never did it. Well, you catch like Paige Pleznak sometimes out there, but like for the most part, it was just like it was just all the people who were like trying like just don't starting really want to do stand you know up. Yeah. Uh, you know I'm up there my first time doing jokes about like cats or something like that, yeah. just bombing yeah. like oof, just eating it. Oh yeah. Thank God Jeff Kearney was there. He was the only one who laughed at like <laughs> a half of my joke, which. <laughs> I was like, okay, I think I can come back next week. You know? Oh, yeah. I had a buddy of mine, I made him try it at Hambones, and Alex Coyne was the only one that laughed at every single one of his jokes. I'm like, well, you got Alex, and you had funny stuff. You should come back. It was a Bitcoin-centric. Your act was No, it? his. Oh, his. <laughs> it had to for coin. <laughs> okay, that's a, yeah, that's a definite possibility. <laughs> what made you want to start doing stand-up? I've always wanted to do it my entire life. I've always wanted to make people laugh. And so I was always um, too nervous to get on stage. You were too nervous. Absolutely, just scared of it. Were you nervous to go into the military? Because that... Yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, why not? But yeah. you have to kind of just, you know... That was a um, dumb... That was, I'm sorry, that was a stupid-ass question. No, it's not, a, it's not a stupid question. It's You have to gut it out sometimes. You have to do things that you are scared of sometimes to get ahead. Yeah. Well, that's the only way you it can happen. Is doing shit that you're scared of. Absolutely. Yeah. I did a half hour for the first time on Saturday and it was I was pooping. I was pooping. Straight up pooping. How was your time? Oh, it was great. It was really great. It worked it did really well. That nervous energy can translate sometimes when you're kind of taken out of, of a, exactly. a comfortable situation and you kind of you have to drive yourself oh, into yeah. into that time, that half hour. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's it's stand up speaking. It's once a joke goes really well to start, then it's smooth sailing. I I could do I I did it well for a half hour. Oh, this is, this is not the Nate Nolf show. It's the it's the Matthew Parsons show. But I that is not in the title. It, it, <laughs> That's what I'm making yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have been tempted sometimes because I do like the quote after, and I've been tempted to some- use something that I've said <laughs> instead because <laughs> I won't name names, but some people were like, I could not find it one interesting thing you said for one hour. <laughs> like, how in the world did you talk to me for an hour? And you talked most of it. How could I not find something? And you're comic. 
and you're a fucking comic. I I'm not gonna name names, but don't. I'll, I'll write them down. Yeah, I do. Pass them to you. <laughs> Tell me after this. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking. About. Yeah, you know. What I'm talking yeah, all right. About. I just, I can't believe I couldn't find like a single quote. <laughs> Jeez, for an hour, everybody tells me it's like the most l- unlistenable episode. <laughs> <This entire. laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but oh my gosh, I like you, that. But you know what it is? There's stand up is such a high and low game. Like you, as soon as something goes really, really well. Almost immediately, something comes back to humble you. Like, I did the half hour, and then on Monday, yesterday, I went to Hambones, and I ate it. I ate it so hard. Like, I, I went up first, and I did a joke, and it didn't work, and I said, is this, like, not funny, or is this just not not being presented well? And uh, Joe S. yelled out, it's not funny. <laughs> like, people fucking lost uh, it. Joey, and huh? then it, <laughs> I, It's not ripping on him at all. And then when he went up, Lorenzo said something about his joke. It's not funny. <laughs> and when Lorenzo, Lorenzo went up, Lorenzo, so justice, it was like, justice. <laughs> <laughs> I've always known Lorenzo for justice. I've always called him the sheriff. You have. I've you always know what? appreciated I like that, you that, that, that from Lorenzo. <laughs> so you always wanted to start doing stand up. Always, since I was a kid. Yeah. Always loved it. Then who were who were the people originally that you really gravitated towards? Oh, David Leon? Tell. Um, geez. Of course, Dave Chappelle. Um, yeah. I mean, most of your big name comics, I guess you see on on Comedy Central. I mean, that's really what I watched nonstop. Do you have a present special that you really really loved back in the day? Um, you know who I really liked. Um, and who really doesn't get a lot of play? DC Curry, the retired oh, boxer. Know. Oh my really? gosh, he is fantastic. He's fantastic. You never really hear about him, um, he was <laughs> but a he's prof- amazing. I, I actually don't even know that name. Absolutely, no one does. I don't know that name. He had like a little stint in like the late nineties, and like really, that was it. And I was he was uh, a professional boxer. Yeah, and then he he becomes a comic, and I, he does this bit about. Um, like the different races and what they do. And at one point, he's talking about white people, and he's he's talking about how they kiss their dog on the mouth. You know, they have their foot hanging out of the car, and I'm oh like, God. you know what? You really got us nailed oh my God. down, DC Curry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Even as you say that, though, like he was a professional boxer who's retired, I that makes sense with you because to me, you are a very athletic person. Like you are a you are a a a tougher a tougher gentleman and like somebody being a professional boxer going into stand up that makes sense for you i'm projecting onto you I right now i don't it's it's kind of that gap i kind of enjoy that I, yeah. you find it in the military i mean doing martial arts and brazilian jiu jitsu you find it. it it's definitely a gallows humor you what know what do you mean by that well you know that you're going to face some kind of uncertainty or or danger and so you know, maybe you joke about it, and and that's oh, kind yeah. of a darker path to humor. Yeah. And, uh, Do you find your humor right now is darker? I don't know. I I mean, I really write from experience. I, I mean, I enjoy that humor, but I don't always know if I meet that mark. But I I, I do my best to. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess uh, sometimes that kind of humor is easier in the moment when you're facing it down. Right. Rather than writing it into a routine. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I've taken aspects um, from those experiences and, and written about, you know, Iraq or, or different things like that. So, yeah, I mean, when I can meet that mark, I, I do. Do you find, are you able to find humor when you're overseas easily? Like, does that come naturally to you where, hey, we could be in danger? I am still able to find. A humorous situation in this moment. Absolutely. It does. 100%. 100%. You have to be able to find humor. When you're trapped on like a a quarter mile perimeter base in the middle of Nimruz, Afghanistan, a place that's kind of located between the Iranian and Pakistani border, there is nothing out there but you, 
uh, two other guys from the army and 160 marines. You you have to find you have to find the humor in things. You uh, have to. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. And then you're running combat missions out and you're dealing with the local population and you know you you see terrible things, you know, things that you know people aren't necessarily exposed to no. here on uh, on this on the state side. Um yeah, hey man, you, because of people like you, by the way. I mean, I, I, I'll say it. I guess. Thank you. But my big concentration in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan was just kind of trying to help kids uh, in bad situations. Uh, I mean, kids in those countries don't necessarily get um, a great level of education. Yeah. Um, so we created programs to, to get them school supplies, you know, um, get them reading, get them educated so they can help themselves out of that situation. Additionally, medical care is uh, problematic. You know, in Afghanistan, I worked directly with, um, well, my team and I, I should say, worked directly with Doctors Without Borders um, to kind of provide medical care, radio messaging to, um, you know, local civilians in oh the Nimruz area. Yeah, because it was crazy because we had these kids and they were dying unexplainably. And um, we found out that the um, mullah or the priest in the area was uh, telling women to wrap their children in blankets if they had diarrhea. And oh these kids gosh. would just basically, you know, dehydrate to death. And so we were because able to get... Because it's misinformation. Absolutely. They don't know. Total misinformation. Uh, science oh my gosh. doesn't really, you know, it's not a thing. And so we were able to get it out to them like, you know, get your kid a sports drink. Yeah. You know? And these kids were surviving. And so we had these mothers call in and they were like, oh, thank you so much, you know. If it wasn't for this message, my child would have died. You know. Oh my gosh! And yeah, it was. It was. It was great. You know, just being able to help people, and that was really important to me because I think sometimes you you meet people um, in the military and they kind of have an attitude like, "Well, you know, I'm just going to kill the enemy." Yeah. And, and that's the way it's going to go. But I don't always believe it's that simple. No. I, I think you have to try to help someone before you. You just start shooting at him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And not that that's a, you know, not that that's a, a super popular um, way to think about things as far as, you know, military personnel trying to kill people, you know. But there is a certain segment uh, of that population that does kind of, um, they want validated through, you know, like yeah. killing the enemy. Yeah. But in a war like Afghanistan or Iraq, it's it's never that simple. Oh no! Mm -mm. It uh, but you're opening my eyes a little bit more to it. Like if I if you asked me Nate, what does the military do, I would say the latter answer that you gave. I would not say what you did in the hospitals for the doctors for those people. I I just would never have thought that. Like maybe that's just that is just my ignorance about what you do. Have you did you always want to did you always want to enlist? No, no, not at all. Why did you? It's actually a funny story. I was in college. I was dating a gal, and uh, she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And so I joined the military. Yeah. Kids need health insurance. You know, you need money coming in. Yeah. And so I signed the contract. And um, What you year know, is this? This was 06. So still pretty heavy in the Iraq war. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were definitely, we were definitely in wow. Iraq, among other places. And so... um uh Unfortunately, uh, she had lost the child, but oh, I had man. signed a six-year contract, oh, my so gosh. I was in. Wow. So time passed. Her and I eventually uh, separate, and I was in the military. There was there was nothing wow. else. And so, you know, I, I went to basic training. I went to advanced individual training at Fort Bragg, and I liked it. I stuck with it. You liked it? Yeah, 14 years, man. I have to like it, right? I mean... <laughs> Can you can you quit? I really don't even know. Like well, at this you point, a, can you just say I'm I'm not doing this anymore? No, you have a contractual obligation. Contractual with, with the government. Absolutely, you sign a contract. Sure. So how long are you in reserve for then? Forever. Uh, I'm looking to Is retire. Absolutely, yeah. I would I would do my time. I mean, I have 14 years in. I you get the letter at 20. Yeah. So uh, it's not a lot of time that I have left. Yeah, comparatively, six right? Six years would go fast, very yeah. fast. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't even know what to say. Like, that is kind of speechless to me, because, like, I, I've done a bit about it, but you you think about people in 
World War II who would fake their age to go in to to get into the military. They would they would that they would fake a lot of criteria to go and serve. I don't think that's the case anymore. And may, it's not maybe maybe correct me on this then, but I I would not be somebody who's faking their age to go to the military. It's a different generation. It's, it's a different all generation. Volunteer army. I mean, when you yeah. look at World War II, uh, Vietnam, I mean, they were draft. People were drafted. I mean, you would have volunteers, mm-hmm. but however, a lot of people were drafted. Additionally, in World War II, it was a different culture. Yeah, much more patriotic than than what we kind of experience now. You know. Yeah, in terms of the military, right? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the government in general, I think you have a lot of information out there that's pretty negative toward the government, and people feel certain ways, and I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but, you know, in For World sure. War II, you didn't have a ton of media out there. You didn't have a no, ton of correct. voices. Yeah, I mean, it, the messaging sure. was the messaging, and people were like, oh, you know, America's great, let's go. That's an interesting point. However, you know, in World War II, you had definitive evil. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. you... you and why wouldn't someone want to go and fight that? Of right. course they would. You know, if you're a young guy and you want to make a change in the world, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to fight the evil organization right. across the ocean. You know, right. you're going to go and do it. Right. Damn. We still find humor while you're over there. You have to. Yeah. You absolutely have to. That's just the difference between you and I. I think. Like I. Let's take let's take the U.S. military out of it or any military operation. I don't. F- I, it's hard for me to ha- find a lot of humor and fear. You would develop those chops. You would develop them. absolutely the <laughs> yeah. experience. You right. would. Why yeah. not? Think uh, about comedy. Think about your progression in comedy. Think about the from the first time you went up till now. If you could go back, yeah, in time, you're 100 percent right. What would you I tell that guy? This. You're 100 percent right, actually. You would look at that guy and be like, "You're you're okay." No, you're Don't actually a hundred percent. Take right. your time. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get better. <laughs> no, you are a hundred percent right. I didn't even think about it that way because I remember starting out being extremely nervous, and I'm I'm nervous now and scared early on. But now it's it's normal. It's normal. I even think of bombing. It's normal to if I bombed as hard as I did last night, one day into it, I wouldn't have gotten on stage again. But you, you learn. To accept bombing. And oh, I bombed, failing. sir. Bombed <laughs> for like my first twenty times. Absolutely, <laughs> it was a while before I had a good set, but it was good because you know bombing is good in a way. Oh, yeah. You want to. <clears throat> it's information. You want to hit it harder though. You get back and you're writing and you're you're motivated. You're like, next time that's not going to happen. Next time they're all going to be laughing. Isn't that so funny? That is all I was thinking about last night. It's like motherfucker. I, this, I'm, not, I'm not proud of this, but I was like, I did a half hour on Saturday, killed, went very well, motherfucker. I don't, I don't need this. I don't need this mic. But it's like, okay, well, no, that <laughs> mic was information. That was information. Killing is like a double-edged sword, right? It is. Yeah, I agree with that. You clearly. get that rush after that mm-hmm. rush. You're ready to do anything. Yeah. Maybe get something to eat. I don't know. Yeah, it, does <laughs> how late is it? We don't hell. know. You know. <laughs> and you're like, man, I'm gonna be a comic. I'm gonna do it. Exactly. And Where then the you catch up Monday, <laughs> Mike, and you're like, oh man. That's it, man. Turns out I'm dog shit it's again. It. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. That's all that I thought about. <laughs> what was the first joke that really killed for you? Oh man. Um. I don't know. I did a I did a joke about my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor that went over okay. well for a while, but now I pitched it. I probably should rework it again. Um, but I, I don't know. Your set kind of goes through progressions, right? Yeah. You have these different points in times where you know your best joke. You think you're just going to be leaning on that thing, and oh, then yeah. six weeks later, you're like, "Why did I ever do that?" Time? That's exactly all I thought last night, man. Why did I ever I'm like, do that? I'm like, this joke time? has done so well. <laughs> And it's like, I think this, this is horseshit. What am I doing? <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, that's, it's, it's, it's hard to go through that. It's hard to perform. Colin Chamberlain said it on this the best. It's like, it's hard to go to those mics that, like, it's just a bunch of comics laying around. But you learn the words. Like, you learn how to say without fucking up how you're speaking. And then you get to the Thursday night mic, and it's, it's roses. And it does well because you've learned what works and what doesn't. You can trim the fat, and then you can present something on a Thursday night 
excuse me, at Burning Bridges that does really, really well. And it's taken me a while to learn that. I watched him at the improv. Did you go? I didn't go. He was on another <sighs> level. And I mean, he didn't give him a break. He was just boom, 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 yeah. boom. It was That's something it. else. Yeah. It was something else. Yeah. I he's, looked. I watched that. I was like, "This guy, he's gonna be a national act." This, that's, that's. It was amazing. Uh, he's like a seasoned. Shout out to Colin Chamberlain. <laughs> he's listening. Oh, he's listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like a seasoned New York comic already, and I don't say New York like they're better than Pittsburgh, but I say New York because it's a major market. It's a major market, but it's also faster punchlines. In New York, you don't get time. Like you get two and a half minutes on stage, so your jokes you have to come out slinging right away punchline 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 set up punchline punchline and like that's what Colin does and he does that very well and it's something I'm trying to get a better at is get to the joke quicker don't give me all this bullshit setup for this punchline that's b minus watching that set though you can tell I mean he put time and care yeah and effort in, into what he was doing you can mm-hmm. tell that that was hard work yeah forged into that headliner time that he did oh I mean, yeah I mean it was amazing it's a big deal it's a huge deal. Do you feel like you you are yourself on stage? I do my best to be. Yeah. Do you um, think you've gotten better at it since? Do, is that even what you want? Do you want to be yourself on stage? I think you have to. You have to have perspective in comedy. Yeah. I mean, whatever perspective that is. But for me, I, I have to have um, a perspective from experience in order to kind of relay my thoughts and make people laugh. Yeah. Um. But don't you have to have that in life? I mean, you're in sales, right? Yeah. You have a oh, certain sure. per, uh, a line of persuasion that for you sure. use with people because you you maybe have an understanding of their perspective in life. Yeah, and that kind of drives the train, and you make that big sale, and you buy a Buick, and you are driving <laughs> well, like a champion. Uh, listen, <laughs> it has XM radio, <laughs> free trial, <laughs> and it is. I'm loving it. <laughs> and you know what got me that perspective? <laughs> perspective, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's it though man like even as i'm trying to write jokes i've i've realized i had like a sick uh i'm just closing this i had a three month stretch where like i was just writing absolute dog shit like nothing was working and i'm like okay well none of these jokes have an opinion like they have okay punchlines, but none of it is these are just kind of observations with no real stance on anything. And then I go back and like listen to stand-ups that I really like. I like Pete Holmes, Mike Rubigley, Anthony Jeselnik, John Mulaney. And it's okay. They have perspective. They have an opinion, a very precise opinion, that leads to a funny conversation. And that's what I've been trying to get good at. Like I Now I think I'm, I'm getting back on that track. And I even look at some of like the earlier jokes that I had. It's like, because I, I have all of them saved and it's like, okay, some of this stuff is just like, it's not good jokes. But you were at least saying something. You were at least saying what you felt about something and be, instead of being trees or green. Well, you never and know. expecting you could, that to get a laugh. You probably end up recycling some of that material, yeah, making yeah. it oh, stronger. Absolutely. Fitting those bits in. I mean, I mean, it's so important to constantly uh, capture your thoughts, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'll fun? get ideas right before bed or something like that. You have to write them down. Sometimes I miss it, and I, I hate that because you so just funny? lose that idea. It's like a minute and a half later. Gone. gone. It's gone. Absolutely Where gone. It, go? it could be the one bit, you know it what I mean? It could be the one bit. The one. That one bit. Yes, and you have to think about it that way, too, man. Like, that's really what I'm learning. Yeah. I'm, like, what, two and a half years in. Like, I'm learning. That you have to, you are a thought machine. Like Steve Martin said that in his master class. I didn't, Joe Marchi still hasn't got me his password for it. So I've just watched the trailer for it a million times. Oh, I watched some of it. Did you? It was all right. It was all right? Yeah, it's okay. The trailer or the actual master The class? actual master class. Do you have the password for it? I, I probably can give you one. I'm waiting for the Ron Renwick master class. The Ron uh, Renwick's master Absolutely. Class. Yes. Is he doing one? That's crazy. <laughs> No, he's not. That's really great. I wish he would. <laughs> you know who should do a master class? <laughs> what? How long like is that? How long is that going? How long is that class? <laughs> it's it's an hour of no, nothing important. <laughs> it's about 15 seconds of a guy combing his hair. It's a waste of your time. <laughs> <laughs> I do like him. I like him a lot. I think he's funny. I just don't. He said it was a bad episode. You guys should uh, <laughs> arm wrestle. Should we arm you wrestle? You and him. Yes. You know who would win in an arm wrestle match between you and I? 
Oh, me. You for 100%. sure. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I'm not. We don't have to debate that. I would give it a good college try. The old college try. I would give it. You wouldn't win for 10 seconds. The old razzle-dazzle. In fact, if I was to make a bet with you about arm wrestling, I would not say sure. you'd win. I would say I would last 10 seconds. You want and the 10-second mark. I want the 10-second. And if I hit the 10 <laughs> seconds, you owe me $100,000. <laughs> and you deserve to give it to me, too, because you shouldn't have taken it. Oh, I'd be psyching up for that. I'm ready. I'm beating you in 8.5. We should do a comedy show where it's all arm wrestling. <laughs> you think? Yeah. I bit listen to me. I have pitched Burning Bridges about a million show ideas, and I think they're pretty good. And John Nick Winter says they're good ideas, and I'm not not getting on them, but like we should get them going. Come on, John, let's get them here's, going. Here's one of my ideas. Are you ready? It's called tag comedy. I was okay. thinking popcorn comedy. Wow. It's like called tag comedy. It's okay. Somebody does a bit, and then whatever bit that last person ended with, the next person has to do a bit in the similar vein, and then they go, and then it's. The next person has to do a bit in the similar vein there. Has to do a bit about the same topic virtually. And then that person has to do the same bit. And it would sell out in a minute. I've always wanted to do a show where, um, you know, you have a comic up there doing his time and then another comic just hackles him. That's the stand up, say, hurry up, say Absolutely. Funny. Uh, well, with, is the other, I've never seen that show. I've never seen it, but it's all crowd work. Well, it wouldn't necessarily be crowd work. It's it's really the resp- you're doing your time, the time that you always do, and then maybe you have a comic that you know or a, a comic that you don't know, and they basically just hackle your punchline. That's hilarious. And then after the fact, maybe you get a minute or two to just destroy them. You know what? I really like that, and you should do that as an open mic. I don't know if that's been done before. I, I have no idea. Who cares if it's done has. before? I think that would be a really fun open mic because that yeah. would get people's like chops solid. Absolutely. I think the problem becomes <clears throat> is that you know you kind of have to rehearse that a little bit still. What do you mean? Well, you know, they would have to have the, the heckling comic would kind of have to have an idea of the comic on stage's time I was really saying, to make it smooth. I was saying the crowd. The crowd. Sh- I was thinking you meant the crowd. That's the R bar. Uh, the R oh, bar sorry, was that definitely. Is the R bar. <laughs> You were getting Dude, heckled by some that was drunk that, citizens of Dormont. That's not. It's not still going on, right? No, it is no, not. No, it's not. It's not. Were you there the one day that the guy got up on stage and like almost kissed me? Yes. You were there. Yes, the day? I think I that was I the was first time die, you were man. there. I was. That was I, one of the first. It was the first time I, I was, was there. moving up to bounce this guy was out, the first time and I then was he there, got man. out. I was scared. I thought he was going to stab me. Didn't he said he was from like L.A. or something? I thought. Right. I think you're right. And I like think he, did. he maybe he got there in like the 90s or 80s or 80s or 90s I think for like so. the hair bands. He did a lot of drugs. He got bounced back to Dormont, PA, you know, and, and now he's heckling you at a he wasn't show. Even, he wasn't even from Dormont. <laughs> now he's, he's now he's Dormont. yeah, he's just a drifter, you know, he's <laughs> <laughs> that guy was creepy, man. And like you, you got some weirdos there. I didn't even think Dormont was a bad area, but I feel like he kissed you out of respect. He didn't kiss me, but he put his forehead <laughs> against mine. And it, you know, but but you were correct. It was out of respect because he like he did it like he was like you got this man. It's like don't listen to them. I'm like I'm, you're the one I'm listening to. You're listen, the one. listen to me. I'm a drifter. You listen you're gonna make it in this business, you're baby. Gonna make, you're gonna make it. You know what I want for this podcast? I want a band. I want a you band to be an absolute. That's a distraction. Band. I think getting them all into it, we could play funny jams. We could serenade you on the way in. You ever heard of the Todd Glass Show? It's a podcast. Okay. That's what I want to do. Wow. I love your intro song. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank it's you. good. I'm always listening. I'm like, wow. I love Nate's, it as well. I'm like, Nate's really got it together. It's, uh, it's my best friend's brother's, one of his bands in high school. Uh called Blythe Hound. It's a song called It's Just Me. I need to get that album. You know what? What the do heck? You, do you have a streaming service? Yeah, sure. I'm okay. Gonna send, I'm gonna send You're going to send it over? Absolutely. It's on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes. It's on I'm everything. ready. It's, you're gonna, it's all you're going to listen to. I'm it's a good song. The whole song is really good. 
I like it. Okay. Are you a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan? You know, I listened to them uh, as a kid. I mean, uh, I used to play bass in high school. I used to love Flea. Oh, yeah? Man's a prodigy. You still play music? No. No? I don't have time for that. You don't look like a bass player. You look like a drummer. Ooh, I love the bass. Right. You do? Love it. Absolutely. Jocko Pastorius, my favorite bass player is. of all time. Oh, probably the greatest. Wow, well, one of the greatest. Is he from Leonard Skinner? I'm gonna ignore that. It's it's no. He's he was like a fusion jazz bass player in like the 70s. He was amazing. He played with nothing. Everybody. Man. I mean, he's great. What is his name? Jacque Jocko Pomino? Pastorius. He's Jock- amazing. Jock. Jocko. Jock yo. They had a whole like a uh, documentary about him on Netflix. It was, <sighs> you know, you get funneled documentaries in Netflix. I get funneled comedy specials. I get funneled. My girlfriend watches crime. Dramas, so I get, I get. Oh, you girls love murder podcasts and shows about murder. I don't understand why so many shows about murder. Um, I don't don't know what's going on there. I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't like watching that stuff. I really don't. I used to work in in criminal law and uh, like as a paralegal, and every time I watch Law and Order, it just makes me angry. Why? I mean, because they never respect any defendant's rights ever. <laughs> you know what true? I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And then like... I don't watch a lot of it. For the sake of entertainment, they like randomly find the guy at a coffee shop that they happen to walk into. Right. That never happens. No, it never happens. Make a real show. Cops was a real show. Oh, absolutely. Cops great. Was any of Cops staged? I was like, okay... Well, Maybe towards thing. the end, John Walsh is... <laughs> 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 and the producers are <laughs> getting some guys... <laughs> I just I couldn't believe when I, ever whenever I watch cops I can't believe that police officers let a camera crew follow them around, and that a camera crew would actually go with these people because they could be in a lot of danger. Haven't you ever watched Vice? I mean, that's the basis of most of the network, right? These extreme yeah. cameramen who so. follow these people into terrible situations. Like I guess so. You know, who wants to film a drug lord? Nobody, but Vice will go. Vice you will know. Go. You ever watch Bong Appetit? No. Oh, you'd like it. Is it amazing? Do you smoke weed? No. There, it's a show. Oh yeah, you don't. It's a. <laughs> we talked about. I it. don't have it. <laughs> it was full circle. What the hell? I, <laughs> I. It's a show where they. It's like a cooking show, but all of the dishes served by the contestants. It has to have weed in it, oh or like God. marijuana. And it's like the whole show is just them getting baked. Like if somebody loses, it really it doesn't matter because they get to go up in the attic and just <laughs> watch the other people make food. And then they were like, on one episode, they were like, you want to go back in? Yeah, sure. So they got back in the competition. I love it. I really love it. Are you eating marijuana? I, I don't do, I don't do the, 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 the pot anymore. No. no. Anymore? No, I used to a little bit, nice. but I don't. I don't fuck it. No. You seem like a pretty chill guy. I am a pretty chill guy, <laughs> You know what I remember driving here today? I was like, I heard somebody call cocaine booger sugar once. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it so much. It made me laugh. <laughs> I was laughing about that all the way here. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. What are your goals with comedy? What do you want to get done? I mean, at the end of the day, I, from Pittsburgh, what can you really do? I mean, maybe become a regional a comic. If if not that, um, move to another city right yeah. i mean anyone who's would good you move goes to new york ah, at this point i don't know i don't know it's kind of up in the air for me like uh i think like i told you before um i had some domestic issues so yeah uh things have kind of changed for me so i don't know if i would move or not uh, yeah i'm not sure where are you from pittsburgh originally though i grew up uh in in uh south fayette Township. Is that around here? It's like by Bridgeville. You know what I mean? Is that around here? Absolutely. It's it is? Yeah, it's where is Bridgeville? Bri- is that over by Banksville down Road? Seventy nine? No, man. I don't know. Seventy nine South? I mean, it's right over the hill. South Bay is literally right over the hill. I have from no where idea where places are. I know Upper St. Clair because we're in it. I know Mount Lebanon because I live in it. Okay. And I know most of the north. I like how you named the most affluent areas <laughs> in know, Allegheny right. County. I know Mount Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Mount Lebanon. 
We look down on those from Dormont. I lived I lived in uh I mean I guess it was technically Mount Lebanon, but I was like in the poorest section in Mount <laughs> Lebanon, which know, which really is amazing. It's mean. still amazing. Yeah, it's still There's like a, a pool th- so close, <laughs> you got scoops on Beverly right next to you. It's great. Okay, yeah. You know? <laughs> So, all right, you know, the, the, the worst part was it's like, you know, we we were in like a one bedroom apartment. It's awful. I talk about when that you were stand up. No, that was like a couple weeks ago. Oh, OK. Now. Oh, OK. OK. Yes. I understand now. <laughs> I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I, I bet it. it's beautiful. You know what? It is. Where is it? Where is it? Where are you? It's uh, do you know where Minio's is? Okay. It's right over. It's right behind that. Oh, so nice. Oh, so nice. It's in this like cute, nice little area. Listen, I don't want to come off ritzy. I don't want to come off unrelatable. But what is that? A Buick? It is. Buick. <laughs> you know what it has? It has Bluetooth. <laughs> Does your Jeep have Bluetooth? Oh yeah. That's the. Oh, so I wanted you to that say was the no. selling point for me to, as I well. I wanted you to say no. So, but that's the difference between you. And he, was, he was. Yeah. The salesman <laughs> was like gas mileage, not so much Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Does your car have XM radio? I'm not doing XM radio. Oh, that's the difference between you and I. I have a phone. What do I need XM radio for? Did you know you can get XM radio Mm -hmm. on your phone? Sure. Have you thought about it? I'm not doing it. This is an XM radio I have enough to listen to. There's plenty of podcasts, music you can listen to. What's your favorite podcast? Ooh, it's got to be Joe Rogan. You like Joe Rogan? Absolutely, Joe Joe Rogan. Rogan. Do you listen to the guests that you don't know? Absolutely. You do? Yeah, I, I just want to hear different people's perspective. I I love that kind of yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, Joe Rogan does bring the bro science, brings it hard. He does. He really but, does. But you know, it's they're interesting long form interviews. I they appreciate are. that. And it's I think long form interviews are so needed right now, where everything is like a five minute clip on the news or Bill Maher's show. It's like it's nice to see long conversations with people, and that's nothing on that, those networks or Bill Maher or anything. Bill Maher's a listener, and I don't want to offend the Bill Maher. I can't stand uh, news networks, and I, I mean, just yeah, I like can't f- either. For instance, being overseas, um, you know, we would watch the news uh, about America, and it seemed like the whole entire country was burning. Really? Right? So you call your friend, and he's like, "No, man, just got off work. I'm gonna TGI Fridays." That's so. He's got some potato skins. America's amazing. Well, what's going on in Afghanistan? Looks like everybody's dying, and I'm like, no, no, actually, quite the opposite. Uh, yeah, I am at the defac, and I got some potato skins as well. It's <laughs> oh <my> amazing. <laughs> Get I got potato skins as well. <laughs> They're not as good. All right, this is not TGI Friday's <laughs> quality, but it is what it is. That's so funny you say that, though. I've I've been fortunate enough to go to Europe, and I when I was where'd you uh, go in Europe? I went when I was in the Glee Club at Pitt. We did a tour of Italy, uh, and I then bet we they did loved the Netherlands, you. And Netherlands and Belgium. Oh, they loved us. Oh, we were sweethearts. It was like nice American young boys coming to sing. Oh, I bet sing for them. Did you, oh, did you play the Vatican? Oh, we didn't play the Vatican. <laughs> we know what we were. We were in the Vatican, but we did not. Play Isn't the Vatican, Vatican crazy? It's amazing. They have a gold door. I don't know where you're talking about the uh, Sistine Chapel. They have a, a gold, gold door. door. There's a gold, the gold door. door outside, and I'm like, you know. I, I I was uh, a confirmed Catholic, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, you know, the whole religion is based on helping people. However, Agreed, they man. have a goal, a solid goal door. Like, who takes care of that? Agreed, man. I, I also, I'm religious, and I, I've i been to, like, there's a church over in Shadyside, and it's a Presbyterian church. I don't want to name Shadyside Presbyterian Church, but I'm going to name them. They have, like, a golden mural of Jesus in the background. I'm like, why can't, couldn't that have gone to, like, Homeless people. Jesus was a baller. He was a baller. He appreciated gold statues. I think he'd be upset that the gold statue was up there. Didn't he beat a bunch of gamblers <laughs> with no. the whip? No. I Absolutely. Don't think so. Oh yeah, Jesus was a rebel, man. I, uh, he. I don't think he beat rebel. I don't think he. Beat oh, he was beating gamblers all day. Listen. All day, Jesus will beat up a gambler. No, he threw people out of the temple for... What do you think that entails? You think they just went willingly? No, Jesus was rolling those guys. That's easy. Well, that's probably... You know, that's an interesting point. I've never thought about that. I've read that a couple times, and a lot of times, actually. I've never thought about the physical nature. He must have been pretty buff. <sighs> probably cro- a lot of CrossFit. I think... 
Jesus doing CrossFit. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Just convincing. He's dude always to, talking about Jesus it. He's convincing converting people. You to do CrossFit. <laughs> I mean, you got to get into it. You ever tried planks? <laughs> <laughs> that's how we got. That's how we got two of the apostles wearing, to follow him. Wearing sandals. <laughs> <laughs> My my neighbor in high school is the fifth best CrossFit guy in the world. Wow. He's around there. You wow. ever Scott Panchik? No. No. You should look him I'm up. I'm going to look him up. You should look him up. Box jumps. What's a box jump? The man's got probably the best box jump in the tri-state area, at least, right? If he's fifth best in the world. Yeah, I think he's pretty Probably good. the best box jump this side of um, the Mason-Dixon line, if we really had to think about it. Yeah, I would say so. You go any west of that, though. There's there's a there's lot some of mean there's some mean box, box jumps. jumpers. There's, <laughs> you need there's some people with some incredible thighs. I mean, really incredible. You head down south? Mm-mm. No, nothing. It's a bunch of grits. No, they have box jumps. Absolutely. Do they? Mean box jumpers. Absolutely. The best. Some of the best. Probably the top four. Your the top five. four down in the you south. You know, your buddies. Yeah. He's number five. He he took a different path. He's PA, we make five, those guys. What is it about the South that makes them such good box jumpers? Though? A lot of beaches a run lot on beaches. that sand. You See, know I, I mean? think a beach would make you kind of wimpy. That's why. You, you think? Oh, absolutely. You ever ran on a beach? Yeah, you could run on a beach, but look at all the NFL teams. None of them are from Florida. I mean, there are, but Well, you have Jacksonville. You have Miami. You have yeah, Tampa. When, when's, the last time, when's the last time a team that wasn't in the North won the Super Bowl? I don't pay attention to it enough to to tell I don't you either. that. I I'm really. I wish I could tell you. Stones at a. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you really. I have no idea. Should what we I'm lo- should about. we look it up? <laughs> no, I don't want to look up anything during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the funnest time, actually. We're almost at an hour. Thank you very much for doing this, by the way. It was it was my pleasure. It's fantastic. It was natural. You know what. You get the record for the longest I've been trying to set somebody for a podcast and have fucked up every time. I felt terrible, too. I would I see these terrible. other people. I was like, oh, my God, I'm the worst comic. No. You know what? <laughs> Mad Bars, I, that is not it at all. That's all. It's all me. And you know what? There are people in line that I said, you know what? I had one today scheduled for today. And I said, fuck you. It's, it's, it's the guy you wrote down on the paper. It's oh, <laughs> I promise it wasn't. I promise you wholeheartedly it was not. So uh, you have listened to an episode. Many. Right? Many. So you know the question I'm going to ask. I'm a regular day. listener. I'm so I've been waiting for this I question. I love when people know the question. So I'll explain it. If this is your first episode, maybe you're at a bar. Night is going poor. Uh, the bartender was just revealed to be from, uh, what's a bad place? I don't want to stereotype bad places, but what's a bad? Shouldn't place? stereotype bad places. I'm. This guy's from a stereotypical bad. Just place. a bad guy. You know, it's a bad guy. He's been poisoning people. Have you heard about this guy? I've seen him around. Have you seen him around? Nobody has done a story about him yet, and he's still hired. He still has a W two at this bar. Can you believe that? He doesn't even claim his tips. He's like nobody tipped me. He doesn't have to file it. I figure he's on like a 1099. This guy is also on tax evasion. He has a warrant out for his arrest. So it's a bad night. But it is also karaoke night, and it's your job, Mr. Parsons, to save the entire evening. What song are you singing to save the night? You know, um, I think you're missing an important part of this whole scenario, and I I only know this because I listen to this all the time. You, this was, you had to answer this question I had to, to this win question. the heart of lovely Monica. Yes, that's true. And um, I need you to understand that I would have botched that whole situation. Because I'm a selfish, I'm a selfish lover. Okay, tell me the answer that you would have said. Look, I'm going Kenny Rogers, the gambler, because that's the song that I like to sing. And I need you to understand something. Okay. I'm, maybe I'm not bringing the night around. I get it. But you know what I mean? I'm not going to chase that bad guy out. I'm not going to save the Asian people that usually die in the bathroom that you That's talk true, about. That's true. I do normally say that. And <laughs> I love that. You know, I what What it. else can I do? And I know I'm a fanboy at this point <laughs> <laughs> regarding your podcast. But, yes, uh, we're going gambler. Kenny Rogers, we're doing it. the Kenny, gambler. You know? And that's what you would have said in this situation to that's win my I'm girlfriend. That's what I'm bringing it. 
I got one tune, and that's Kenny Rogers, the Gambler. Do you have you sang this song karaoke? Absolutely, before? actually. You felt it. You do it well. Oh, nailed it! Uh, yeah. I got a bit of a bellow to me. Actually, got an ex-girlfriend that way. Really? Shout out. Really? Yeah. You actually did it. Yeah, nailed it. it. Absolutely. Really? Sure. Dated her for a year. No kidding. Totally botched it. You just like actually, I would have that question. You actually did it. Like yes. You did it, and then you got the girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, that's a mil- I love you because yeah. that's a million times better than my story what do you, you mean act- it's a million you actually did it you I have didn't, to i didn't win monica by doing <laughs> by doing what do i what is mine um time after time something Cindy real Lopper. emotional oh, so man. you're not getting through that can Cindy i tell Lopper? you why that oh you're not by the way it's a lovely piece uh, you know why i say that you know why that actually was my answer because I'll I'll inside baseball the fuck out of you right now. I <laughs> I I was in a choir at the time and we sang that for a women's uh it was like a it was between the men's and the women's choir. We did like a joint song and time after time by Cindy Lauper. Why do you remind me of song. Andy Bernard from The Office right now? <laughs> I can't tell if I should be offended by that. I'm just gonna assume you said Ed Holmes, who I think is pretty attractive. I think he's an attractive. I'm talking to the character. I know. <laughs> I don't. Don't be more specific, you asshole. Don't be more specific. <laughs> Listen, I like your aunt. This was. I've been thinking about this. I know for you far have. too long. I know. You and have. I had so many different answers, but now that we've got to the point of this thing, I'm just like, I'm just gonna do what I know. I'm really glad you did. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, uh, I definitely need to plug my, uh, not mine, but my my good friend Ron Renwick's uh, monthly mic up at Red Beards. Um, it's a great room. Um, You're on those shows a good bit, right? I am sometimes. I haven't been lately. Again, I've had a situation. Yeah. And then also I'll plug uh, his open mic up at Scarpazzi's. Yeah. And... Uh, that's it for me. I mean, I don't have much. Do you have the social medias? I follow you. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I mean, uh, I don't do much on Instagram. I probably should. You kind should. of kind of bad at that that part of the game, but the, it's, it's the same thing. Very I'm just good. concerned about my time. I just need to work on my time. That's what I care about most. And then maybe I'll get to that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's a great way to spend your time. Honestly, nice. I really do. I like Instagram. <laughs> You should follow me on Instagram. I have tons of great posts. I can't believe I'm not following you on Instagram. I can't Instagram. believe I'm not either. It's, uh, I have a comedy page. You're gonna, you're gonna shit your pants. Great posts. I, I need it. You do. You get to sign us off. You get to say anything you'd like. I've had people say really nice stuff. I've had people not really give a shit about it. I've had nobody's been mean to me. I say sometimes people have been mean to me. Nobody's really been mean to me. Said inspirational things. Say whatever you'd like. Well, um, signing off, I, I just really think that stand-up comedy is about perspective. And you have to kind of carry your your own perspective onto the stage and, and kind of get in front of that crowd and, and give them a piece of who you are. And that's important to me, and, and that's one of the big reasons why I do stand-up or, or really do anything in life. And uh, you're a hell of a guy. Why would someone say anything mean to you? I, mean, I don't you're, know. You're so nice. That's why That's why I thought... F- I, I was nice to say people... That was a great way to sign off, too. I just thought it's it's funny to say people have been nice to me, people have been mean to me. But nobody's really Who was mean, mean to, to you? Me. Nobody. I'll nobody's choke them really out. mean to me. Thank you. You know what? I need to hire you, actually. No, I didn't. we're friends. I'll do it for free. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I like it. Is anybody mean to you? Sure. Why not? Because I, that's ridiculous. No, that's okay. Yeah, I guess I don't think anybody's really mean to me. No, absolutely not. No. No. I guess I don't think about that. You are the nicest guy. Who's going to be mean? Why would they be mean? Even if they were, you'd be so nice. You'd be like, man, I probably shouldn't have. Well, I appreciate that a lot. I try that. and be nice. Sometimes I'm a dick. <laughs> but I try and be nice. I'm waiting on it. <laughs> Listen, when I make it big... <laughs> I am. Oh, you're gonna be. You're gonna be regret squashed like a show. bug. 